Good afternoon and welcome to Have a Chat. I'm Audrey Lynch and guest hosting with me today is Mayor Adam Lorden. Welcome. Good afternoon, Audrey. It's yes. great to be here again. Uh, my three musketeers are busy, working, vacationing, whatever it may be, and you were very, very happy to, to fill in so that we could go ahead and the show must go on. Well, as you know, uh, I got the call from Judy and uh, you don't say no to Judy. No, this so. is true. <laughs> this is true. This is true. It's, it's, it's a little hard to say no to her. It is. But it, we love her. We miss her. And we miss Barrow today, too. So Absolutely. Well, yeah. and I, you know, it's always uh, any excuse I have to get back here with you ladies and have a chat. Oh, I'm, I'm nice. happy to do it. So That's it's great. great. We were just talking off air about how it's your, you're coming into your fourth season. So congratulations yes. on yes, all the success. Yes, we are. It is. It's exciting. It's hard to believe we've been here this long. But we're loving it and still going strong. And we still have a long list of guests that are looking to come on the show. So definitely a great show. We have a great show lined up for you today. Lots of great guests. Mm -hmm. Lots of information and interesting things happening here in Miramichi that you're going to want to stay tuned and find out about. But we're going to start off our show like we always do, which is a quote of the day. Okay. And I'm going to start off. Um, uh, our producer actually uh, mentioned this quote to me and thought it was fitting, and I agreed with him. So this is our quote for today that we wanted to share. Grief is like an ocean. It comes in waves, ebbing and flowing. Sometimes the water is calm, and sometimes the water is overwhelming. So, and that is in lieu of, unfortunately, the incidents that happened in Fredericton yes. this past Friday, the shootings that happened, and we definitely wanted to touch on that. First and foremost, that our thoughts and prayers are with all of the family and all of the friends and all of the officers and first responders and everyone that partaked in having to deal with that incident. And, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. And, 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 of course, the the two civilians that lost their yes. lives as well yes, and, and, exactly. the, uh, and the entire city you know and I, I think and when this happens in any community or any mm -hmm. city big or small the whole community feels these things but in a province like New Brunswick you know we we are all standing with Fredericton and and absolutely definitely, sending our thoughts definitely. and prayers that way that's and, just it I mean know? you know just to hear of all of that like for, for us here in New Brunswick, I, Fredericton, it might as well have been across the street. Absolutely. You know, that's yeah. how close and that's in a tight knit that this province really is because Miramichi did respond. That yes, morning. yeah. Well, you know, we, um, at, again, being in a province where everybody is so closely knit, um, you know, absolutely uh, Friday, very early on in the day, uh, mm -hmm. the Miramichi police force sent. Uh, reinforcements or, or sent some of our members down and some of our, our vehicles down to help in the, on the ground in Fredericton and I know many other communities across the province mm -hmm. did the same and that you know that's absolutely just part of being good neighbors and letting them know that we're there for them uh, it, extra difficult for their forces having lost m members of their, of their own. own and so yes. with that comes some of them needing to take to take breaks and and mm -hmm. so you know our our folks our men and women will be down there all week this week as well and again many communities will do the same so yeah exactly that's just it so our thoughts and prayers are with all of them we actually have a little footage of um, some of the um, going ons after the police had arrived because initially they didn't have him uh, they didn't have him apprehended right away which right. is why reinforcements I believe would have been called in but I am actually truly thankful that I was you know that they actually got him like to me in a relatively short amount of time and that he was apprehended and he was taken I believe to hospital first because he was injured yeah. um, but uh, and that it, like as the story unfolds I don't even want to speculate on why because I'm, I'm under the impression that why it all went down is still unknown that's under investigation as well but it's uh, that's the same thing that uh, yeah. I've seen in red as well, and you know, I, kudos and uh, to the all of the folks involved in in Fredericton, and mm -hmm. you know, these things happen, and and there's what's happening, and then of course there's what the rest of us are seeing and hearing too, and that's so uh, you know, in a measure of a couple of hours, they mm -hmm. had the situation under control, and and yeah. it was probably communicated to the public as well, you know, yeah. in, in Fredericton. 
certainly yeah. people would have been uh, wondering what was going on in around the province and many folks exactly. in Miramichi have family and relatives and things in Fredericton as well so mm -hmm. you know, I liked we that the, closely. I liked that the police force actually made note because a lot of people unfortunately we do we jump on the internet we jump on social media to find out what we believe has happened because people are posting where they're at and pictures and things like that but they immediately got that under control as well by yeah. please asking people to not post where you see the police cars mm -hmm. because he was still loose he hadn't been captured so it's very very important that you don't re reveal the details of where Absolutely. they're at when they're trying to catch this guy and I believe the citizens of Fredericton and you know the surrounding areas did just that. Well, it's interesting. I was at uh, last Thursday actually at the uh, annual Peacekeepers uh, Memorial right. Ceremony, yes. and uh, they had a guest speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Dufour, who's uh, the Lieutenant Colonel for the North Shore Regiment right. here in Northern New Brunswick, mm -hmm. and he gave a, a keynote address, I guess, and it, the theme of his speech was really to talk about the differences in military but policing is the same and protective services of you know 30 or 40 years ago I as compared know. to today and the, and ultimately what he was saying which you know we could see as true is mm -hmm. that it's so so much more complex now with the layers of social media but war you know any combat or war is no longer a matter of us and them it's no. so much grayer than that it is and uh, it so for, is. for whether you, people are out in the military fighting overseas or whether they're mm -hmm. protecting us in their own communities it's just a lot more challenging than it, it used would to be. be it would definitely would be for sure again our thoughts and prayers with everyone in Fredericton at this time and as they and hopefully they get through this with all the love and support of the surrounding communities and from us here in Miramichi too. Uh, absolutely. Definitely. We want to talk about some other things that are happening in Miramichi now. There is a barbecue <laughs> food coming up. So you are putting on, if I can pick your brain for a minute, the Mayor's Newcomer Welcome Barbecue. Now tell me what that's all about. That's yeah. coming up? Yes, yeah, this so is, uh, well, summer is, just has to be barbecue season, summer. I guess. But uh, we, we're really thrilled about this event. This is a mm -hmm. new event or a first time mm -hmm. event. Um, I'm working, uh, the, multi, uh, the Miramichi Multicultural Association uh, okay. is hosting the event alongside, right. uh, I guess, myself as mayor and the council. Okay. Um, and we've got lots of other community partners involved as well. The Chamber of Commerce is involved, uh, Pedal, um, and I shouldn't have started naming people because I'll, I'll... Yeah, if you the, forget the, somebody. The and they, um, there are others, but uh, effectively, you know, um, we, Miramichi, uh, over the last couple of years, we have had hundreds of people... An influx. Move, an influx of people um. moving to the city or back yeah. home and for yeah. a couple of reasons you know many folks retiring to Miramichi hundreds coming in from across the country to work at the Federal Pay Center correct of course from communities yeah. across Canada and more and more uh, we've got new Canadians newcomers immigrants moving to the region as well actually um, there were 18 uh, Filipino uh, folks who just moved to Miramichi oh, about a week kidding. ago oh wow um, and and so for us as a community uh, you know population uh, Maintaining and growing our population is the biggest challenge that not just Miramichi is facing, but oh, every yeah. community across every. Atlantic Canada. Mm -hmm. So for us, one of the things that we can do is make sure that everybody knows whether they're here already or they're thinking about coming that Miramichi is an, a welcoming and inclusive place. And many of the, the uh, new, new Miramichi immigrants that I've spoken to over the last few months, Many of them have said what they would really like is an opportunity or more opportunities to interact with their neighbors, the, the folks that are That's from right. here, to interact with their mayor and council, to feel like a part of the community, share their ideas. So this Saturday, uh, August 18th, this is exactly what we're going to do. So it'll be uh, one to four on the water for green in Chatham. Okay. Um, everything is open and free and it's for newcomers but also anybody from Miramichi doesn't matter how long you've been here your whole life everybody's welcome everybody's because welcome. they want to meet the locals as well that's just it um, you know what it reminds me of if you're the new kid if you're the new kid in school yes right how hard it is to make friends and and because the people who are here already have friends and they already have that's their right. cliques or they have their social crowds that they all hang out with and this is going to be a huge opportunity 
for them to meet the locals to find out what's available within our city as well That's as for right. services and things. You're absolutely right. So there's two, you know, there's the social component and we're going to have mm -hmm. music all afternoon. Uh, we're going to have free barbecue. We're going to have food is good. Food, food brings people in. We know <laughs> that, uh, you know, games and bouncy castles for the kids and everything. But then we'll have what we're calling, I guess, the information expo That's where right. we'll have representatives from Service New Brunswick, Service Canada, the okay. city's recreation department, yes. uh, transit. Uh, I think there's about 20 different people that are coming and and so when you move anywhere new sometimes it's hard to find information to know exactly where you need to go so uh, True, it's going it to be is. a lot of uh, one-stop shopping uh, in terms of being able to see what we have in the community what what's out there where you need to go whether it's a, for a license or a registration or exactly. anything else. Exactly so. even just being able to I know I've bumped into a few people asking for directions and for us who live here, it is so simple. We're like, there's the river, there's that side and this side, there's two bridges, and this is what's in between. But to describe to somebody where to go, oh, that's just, you know, and they're like, lost. Down the street, turn yeah. left, <laughs> oh, no. at the old uh, Because we whatever. tend to not, I don't <laughs> anyway, I'm awful. I don't know the names of the streets, but I'm like, you know that house with the funny windows and the garage that's faced like, and that's yeah. how we give directions, that unfortunately. <laughs> And they're like, how do I GPS that? Yeah. Uh, old house with the windows is not coming nope. up in my uh, nope. Google Maps. No, <laughs> yeah. exactly. That's just it. Uh, so this sounds like a great, great event. Again, you said down on Waterford Green in Chatham, yeah, Waterford 1 to 4. Green, 1 to this, 4. Saturday? this coming Saturday, yeah. This coming and Saturday. again, uh, everybody out there watching, please come down and yeah. join us. Uh, it's, it's for everybody. Exactly. And it's free. And it's all free. That's yeah. fantastic, fantastic. So talking a little bit about um, things happening in Miramichi, tonight is the last night for the uh, play Madagascar. Yes, I've heard great things over, there the, over the, the weekend. Yes, it, opening night was Friday night, and I was there for that. My daughter, uh, Danae, she plays five different characters, actually, and actually had a, a speaking role this time, so she was pretty mm. excited about that. And a lot of singing, a lot of dancing, so much work went into this in such a short imagine. period of time. I guess even dress rehearsal, when you were watching it, you were like, oh, tomorrow night's opening night, really? I went to opening night and it was like picture perfect. Well, and I, I guess time flies always, and especially in the summer. I was just, it's River Maid Productions, right? Yes. And I was just at their, yes. Mr. Gopi their play uh, for the Rock and Roll Festival. Yes, which they did. Which feels like it was just last week which was also amazing right. and so they've done this whole Madagascar in a matter of five six weeks it's, I know it's incredible I know I mean it was intense and the practices are long and and the kids like I know Danae, for Danae as a 14 year old to get up and be at practice in the summer for 9 a.m. yeah and she dragged her butt out of bed and she though she she loved it when the practices switched to the evenings though they were a little bit longer <laughs> And um, but she loved not having to get up in the morning. So tonight's the last night, and I believe they're all going to go to dinner afterwards. If you haven't seen it, you must go check it out. Um, the tickets, I believe, it's not completely sold out okay. yet. It's beautifully air conditioned in there. Um, <laughs> bring a sweater for sure, and they put on such an amazing job. I personally love live theater. Like I love I the too. movies. Period. I love going to the movies, but to go see something live. Well, and, it, and it's local talent, too. Oh, I mean, the movies yes. are, are also great, but mm -hmm. this is our, these are our people yeah. showing off their talent. And it's incredible, really, over the last couple of years, the, the amount of live theater and, and arts That's and right. culture that we're seeing popping up in every corner of the community. And yeah. it's, it's interesting because it's the last night of Madagascar, but it's also today is, I suppose, the, the beginning of the week-long uh, Miramichi River Community yeah. Theater Festival. That's right. That's, That's their, right. This Starts. is their a, a new festival. All, all different Brand theater new. productions, yeah. musicals, exactly. workshops, com com uh, comedy workshops That's right. for kids, and and so there's events happening all week from today till Friday, I believe. Yeah, little events um, and little workshops for anybody who's interested in knowing more about acting and putting on plays, or they even just want to take in a little play. That's right, and I think they have about six or seven or eight plays. I could be wrong. Sam right. and Naomi will. Shoot me, but uh, they're, the, you know, they've got, and that, that's a great story too. These are yes. two young Miramichiers, both of whom actually now I think live and go to school in Fredericton, but yeah. who chose, but to chose to come, come home here. this summer and start this Put festival this. and tribute to Lloyd Cameron, of course, that's but right. also just it to is. do something positive for the community. You know. And uh, I know one of the plays they're putting on is a, a, a musical built around the music of the Bernicket Ladies. Oh, really? So I'm actually uh, going to be heading out to see that play as well. Oh, this for week. goodness sakes. Yeah. Well, I would imagine on their Facebook page, they actually have a list yes. of 
of everything that's happening, the workshops and the little plays and the mm -hmm. times and, and everything else like that, so that people here in Miramichi, we're always thinking, if you don't have anything to do or you're bored, you're not machine. looking hard enough, no, that's what we say. No, you don't even have to look hard, really. There is so much going on here in Miramichi. The other thing I wanted to make note of, of things like that with, the, like you said, the talent. Now, there's the actors and the singers, but I want, I, I want to make note to those who put the costumes together, the sets together, the lighting, the sound. Because seriously, when there's no sound <laughs> or there's work. no lights, you see and hear nothing. Well, and you know, I guess right? as in my per professional career, I was just you telling you that. as a producer and director, um, you the, the actors, the front of camera people, we can't get very far without no. the tech crew. In fact, no. the tech crew in some ways make it all possible, make That's it all right. happen. Without them, uh, you know, they, yeah. they're what really brings it to life and adds those That's extra right. layers. And, yeah. and we've got some phenomenal folks we do. that do that too. We really do. So we want to say kudos to them as well, for sure, for sure. I want to touch a little bit on the weather we've been having this summer. Isn't it absolutely phenomenal? I'm someone who travels down south for the last eight years, and I really don't think I'm going to have to go too far if this keeps <laughs> up this winter. It has been absolutely beautiful, and I just want to say hi to all my curly-haired clients. Hang in there, girls. <laughs> You're going to get through this. The humidity, I know, is through the roof for sure, but um, it's just been unbelievable. And because of that, I think a lot of Miramichiers have gotten out and enjoyed our beautiful river that we have here. I actually Absolutely. spent the last two days on a boat out on the river just t just taking it all in. I mean, there's only, mm. what, eight weeks, eight weekends in a in summer? summer. Right? Ten, There's if we're being generous. Yes. <laughs> if we're lucky. June was a little rough, but it has been. And because of that, I think, has it brought in more tourists? Has it brought in more for I us mean, here Absolutely. And I know we'll talk a little bit more about this with right. our guests here That's from right. Fletcher's Farm today. But, you know, over the last couple of years, we've really worked very hard as a city mm -hmm. um, and as a region to promote ourselves as, as Atlantic Canada's great outdoors. Okay. And when we look at what you can do in Miramichi, in particular mm -hmm. in the summertime, you know, there's just an endless bounty of, of outdoor activities and outdoor uh, exciting things to do. Like, like, and a lot of them centered around, of course, the river. So I've, That's uh, just it. I, um, I've been out to tubing. Um, I've, been to I have it I have to take at least one annual trip to Kushimaquack every summer oh, to that's Kelly's right Beach it's one of my beach. favorite yes um, Eskumanak I love to scoot out yeah. to there as well another popular spot that 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 campground that area has grown yeah and flourished quite well is and uh, beautiful. and I heard uh, I was done at the fire fit on the weekend and I oh, heard yes. that a lot of the firefighters who were in town for the events were heading down to the zip line that's at, right. uh, at French Fork Cove exactly. the longest in the Maritimes so it's there, it is. You're right. The weather has been beautiful, and uh, I've even just had many great nights out on, on the back patio. You know, I bought a house last year, so oh, we've that's got right too. the big deck. We're Perfect. doing the, the table and everything else. Well, so. we're going to get ready to take a quick break, but we are going to be back with more Have a Chat, so don't go away. We've got a lot more for you. back with more have a chat up next we have a doctor joining us today we have dr colleen leonard hello, hello. how are you i'm good how are you thanks guys for doing? joining us today yes, thanks for having me i appreciate yeah. it now you uh work out of the miramichi naturopathic health clinic right yes. here in miramichi yes. douglas town area yeah. mm -hmm. so first we want to find out a little bit about you yourself yes. so if you can tell us sure um so i grew up in miramichi i'm originally from newcastle graduated from mbhs uh, in 2009 mm -hmm. and I I kind of wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted to do something science-based. So I went to Dal to do my undergrad, and I did it in psychology, okay. um, Bachelor of Science with an honors in psychology. 
So mental health has always been a big part of what I like to okay, do. Okay, yes. Um, and then I was torn between whether I wanted to go into medicine, do I want to do physiotherapy, do I want to be a psychologist, what I wanted to do. Because there's a huge, you can, yeah, you know, yes. from that, you can tap into just about anything. Exactly, so many options. Yes. So then I, I had met with Crystal a few times, gone to see her as a patient. With Crystal Shresh, she's the owner of the Ma Naturopathic Health Clinic here. Yes, because um, she's a naturopathic doctor yes, as, as well. well. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so after I saw her and I kind of got to know what naturopathic medicine was, mm -hmm. it really intrigued me because it kind of includes everything. It, you know, there's a physical medicine side to it, there's a medicine side to it, there's mm -hmm. a mental health component, um, there's everything. So when I really read into it, I thought, you know what, this sounds, this sounds like a good fit and it, it really was. So I did, I ended up doing four year program. There's two schools in Canada, one in Vancouver and one in Toronto. Okay. Um, so I went to Toronto for four years to do my schooling and then I just started practicing in November in Mary That's Sheen. right. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yes. it's been it's been really good. It was it was a tough four years. It was a lot of work. But yes, away from home and family would have been a little oh, rough. Oh, yeah, and, for and sure. And Toronto's a little different than yeah, Mary Sheen. quite different. <laughs> that would have been a bit of an adjustment for <laughs> you there as well. A little bit of a well. faster pace for sure there. Yeah. So it was, I was really happy to come back to Mary Sheen. I was definitely a little worried because it is yeah. Mary so you never know. But I've seen so many good things in Mary over the last little while that Exactly. Been you awesome would have here. seen a big growth coming back oh after gosh. being gone for yeah, those four for years. Sure. Really? Then it's it's kind of like bumping now. It's nice. Like yeah. There's always things well, going on, and so we feel it's that everywhere. Good. You know, yes. there is there is a, unquestionably a renewal happening yeah, in the community, sure. and a big part of it is younger people yeah. choosing to come, to come back, back. back. and to, whether it's to open their business or work out of yeah, business sure. or raise their family. So, yeah, so thank been, you yes. for choosing to come <laughs> I home. I know it's been good. So give us a rundown, follow. like on why someone would give you a call. What is it? you know, that you treat specifically. Right. Can you categorize a little bit of it for us? Um, I can try, yeah. Okay. So it's it's a very, I mean, it's a very broad mm -hmm. type of medicine. Right. So in bigger communities, like in Toronto, you would pick a specialty kind of and narrow down on in it. Whereas in Miramichi, it's kind of whatever we see fit is fine. Like I kind of treat a very broad spectrum of conditions and everything. Um, but if I had to say, I think I focus a lot on mental health. Okay. Um, partly because of psychology background, but mm -hmm. I just find in so many cases, we, I mean, we spend an hour with a patient and we go through an entire health history mm -hmm. from, you know, what their main concern is to their stress levels, to their energy levels, to their sleep, um, family history and all of that. And when you get to know somebody over the course of an hour, you, you learn a lot about their mental health as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's always a little bit of mental health incorporated in each case. So I, I think I, that's across the board. Yeah, myself. For sure. I'm not a doctor. No, but, <laughs> but no. It's, I'm, I'm a mother of four most, children. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so there's there's always a little piece there, and I'm so passionate about mental health that you? it's yeah. a big part of what I do. I think. Right. Um, but like I said, we treat everything. We go. We do menopause. We do digestion. We mm -hmm. do stress. We do anxiety, depression. Um, all kinds of different things. Skin Do you concerns. find that most of your clients would be somebody who's tried traditional medicine and things are not working for them and they're going to see you? Yeah, definitely a majority okay. for, you know, a few people right. that are, you know, I'm on all these medications. I don't really yeah. want to be. I don't know why I'm on them. So mm -hmm. is there options for me? And we'll often work with their medical doctor to stay on page. That's and know. big. Yeah, That's for something sure big because have. I think years before, they were two separate things, yeah. and now they're actually yeah. a little yeah, more in sure. contact it's, with each it's, other. It's on its way there to be an exactly. integrated medicine here in Miramichi, which mm -hmm. is another important thing that I think the more we come and the more we get ourselves out there, that it does become more of a legitimized health care system here, um, which I think is it's really important. It's exciting to see that there are people that are getting on board with it and opening up because I've had I've had a few patients come in and say oh my medical doctor recommended that I could I should come here because oh, they didn't really wow. know where to go yeah so yeah I'm curious Colleen because uh, you know I guess I've I've heard of naturopathy yeah. and mm -hmm. and uh, you know heard a lot of uh, some of the benefits yeah. as it relates to physical health yeah. but I, I'm curious if we could just uh, in regard to the mental health For piece sure, yeah. um, like, could you give me an example of 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 how you could apply naturopathy to men mental health? Like, yeah. what, how, you know, maybe something that people. Yeah. So, um, I do. I'll be honest. I do a lot of like mindfulness. So, my father is Dr. Leonard, who also does a lot of mindfulness, kind of with mm -hmm. his practice in a sense, or just outside of practice. Um, but I grew up over the last ten years with him and seeing 
how it changed him and how amazing mindfulness can be. So with most patients, they'll see on their prescription pad, it says, okay, three to five minutes of meditation a day, something very simple. There's lots of apps out there that people can yes. use. They can go on YouTube and Google a quick uh, meditation, but just allowing somebody to have like a three minute meditation in their day to give them just a quick body scan of how to relax can make a huge difference because it, it just allows them to be present. Because we do kind of live in a world where we always are thinking about yesterday and tomorrow. We're not always just there in the moment. Right in the moment. Yeah. yeah, so I find it's a very small thing that people can try and it doesn't cost anything. It's three minutes of your day that's kind of done that way. So that's a big piece of my mental health side of it. Um, but I mean, there's supplements out there. We do a little bit of counseling too because we have health psychology in our program. Mm -hmm. um, so we do, yeah, a little bit of counseling. Um, acupuncture can actually be really helpful for mental health. So we do more of an energetic type acupuncture to help things move. Um, that could go in a whole <laughs> other, different direction if I was gonna keep talking about that. But um, it, um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of different options. It, I mean, it's case by case too. So naturopathic medicine is very individualized. So that's part of our um, oath and um, our principles is that it's individualized treatment. So not everyone's going to get the same thing. I could have five people that come in with anxiety right. and I'm going to do something different with all of them based on their case history kind of. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about naturopathic medicine there too is. Well, the mindfulness, I'd have to say, mm -hmm. because she says it, I, I recall hearing it for the first time, a lot of school systems are bringing it yeah, in. For sure. And requiring the children, this is the mindfulness room. Yeah. And when you need yeah. a minute or two or three, yeah. you go in and you just reconnect. Definitely. And what would you say the benefits of that are like, as far as would you have to do that like every single day for how long before you actually notice and feel a difference I, or is everybody different there as well? Yeah, I would say, I mean, it's definitely different for everyone. There's mm -hmm. people, you know, it's not easy to sit down and focus uh, on something yeah. for even three minutes. Um, so I always make sure they start at least with someone talking to them, like t talking them through, so a guided one. Um, but I do find that I could see somebody the week before and they come back next week and they say, oh, I tried it one night and I felt really good. So it, mm -hmm. I mean, the research is there. I think it's like eight minutes a day of meditation. I don't know for how long, but it can actually yeah. change how your brain is wired. So oh, wow. that's a pretty small amount of time to do eight minutes a day. So I always say, you know, three minutes is... For better mental health. Yeah, but exactly. That's my kind of workout on here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Eight minutes. Yeah. Well, he won't arm wrestle me. Yeah. Yeah. I asked him to arm wrestle <laughs> me he was out exactly do a meditation competition no, that's just it. yeah well I actually know dr. Leonard on a personal level um, um, uh, last year I had actually gone to see her um, after I had had surgery and there was uh, quite a few complications and um, it turned out that I was um, going into the surgery we knew I was low iron so we mm -hmm. made sure that we topped that up mm -hmm. and and blood and all of this, but and then still things didn't turn out the way they wanted. And with all the test results, it turned out I was severely vitamin C deficient, which mm. mimicked a um, uh, blood clotting disorder. Mm -hmm. So I ended up having to have like four units of blood, which was it was really really scary yeah. for me to be you know the medicine side of things and being treated that way. And then when I came out of all of that, and traditional medicine could no longer help me I was still feeling so not me mm -hmm. and the energy was not there and my ability to do as much as I was normally able to do and handle I thought oh no right but yeah. with all these vit vitamins are so important yeah, all of the minerals sure. and I never really I always took that for granted you know take your multivitamin do it <laughs> for sure and I was having to and what my doctor recommended to take and what my naturopathic doctor recommended shake was like three times as much. That's oh, yeah. how depleted yeah. I was. Quite wow. a bit more. Right? Yeah. So we actually, I spoke to her for an hour mm -hmm. and then she did up a prescription. I don't know if a lot of people know this or maybe they've heard of. And I actually went there, sat and through intravenous had my vitamins delivered oh, yeah. for 30 minutes every week for like four or five weeks so that instead of me spending a year trying to build it all back right. up, right. I was able to get ahead, yeah. not ahead, top it up, and then maintain it by mm -hmm. taking my vitamins. And it made a world of difference. I felt like myself, and instead of a year, like within that three months, mm -hmm. I was starting to feel better. Wow. But if you can elaborate a little yeah. bit more, because I wasn't the only one in the room. No. There was, there was, <laughs> there's a living room of beautiful, comfy recliner rockers, and yeah. we're all hooked up to yeah. IV together. 
all having a say, yeah. but there was a number of people in there for different issues. Yeah, so. for sure. So the clinic offers a variety of different IVs. So mm -hmm. the main one that we tend to do is called a Myers cocktail. So it's the right. yes. So it's all the high dose vitamins. It's got vitamin uh, all your B vitamins. It's got magnesium, calcium, mm -hmm. potassium, some other things to help with immune system and energy. Um, so a lot of times, if we have somebody that comes in, if they've been sick for a really long time, or they just seem like they're deficient, energy's low we'll often try to start them on an IV Myers cocktail so we can mm -hmm. get their vitamins into them quickly so they can feel better so that, like you said, they can kind of maintain that health mm -hmm. and move that way so they can at least have a kickstart. Um, the other ones that we do, we do IV vitamin C intravenous, so it's a very high, high dose vitamin mm -hmm. C. So a lot of times for like wound healing, it's used a lot in cancer patients. Um, so we don't specifically have like a cancer-based practice, okay. but if we have patients that are coming in with cancer and it seems appropriate after we do the lab work and everything, then we'll often recommend to do some IV vitamin C. So it's I think it's 50,000 IUs of vitamin C, like quite yeah. a bit. Not vitamin C eat. is important too. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say that it truly is. Yeah. Um, you know, autoimmune. Yeah, and like any you're being kind able of, to repair. Yeah. If you have a wound or an incision, you've had surgery, yeah. like top up your vitamin C. Yeah, it helps for it. sure. Yeah, it's definitely good for wound healing. And then even in the winter, what I typically will do with patients is take your vitamin C kind of every day if you feel sick increase your dose a little bit and go back down right. kind of to so mimic these, it a little bit. So these kind of treatments, um, like would, would those be covered under people's medical plans? Yes, they are actually. So we would bill it as a naturopathic visit and then it just gets billed through that. So if they have naturopathic medicine coverage, then it would get covered through that. And we do direct billing right at the clinic. So for most insurance companies now, so it's, it's convenient that way too. So you're not paying exactly. anything out of pocket. Um, the one other IVs that we offer too, that Dr. Shress, the owner, um, she does chelation therapy. So it's kind of like a heavy metal detox. Oh, um, wow. So that's the ones, if you were in there, they, they sit, it's like a three hour long detox right. in a sense, but it's putting chelation therapy in so that uh, heavy metals can come out. So a lot of times with cardiac concerns and elderly patients um, and people who have worked in like mines or welding or anything like that, we do a heavy metal test to see what they have. Mm -hmm. um, and then we kind of do it according to that to kind of flush their systems out. And it really works really well. I've heard good things. I'm not certified in it, but from yes. everything that Crystal Is that me. something that you're finding more and more of? Yeah, I that people think, are yeah, people are requiring. coming yeah, and wondering about it. And I mean, it, it's definitely a little bit more kind of history based a bit, okay. like if they did work in mines or they've worked somewhere where okay. there's mold and things like that. So okay. it really does require a little bit of history taking and to do a heavy metal test as well, just you to know, see. Just uh, back to the, the vitamin, mm -hmm. yeah. I guess, scenario, mm -hmm. because yeah. that's something so many of us probably try make our best effort to get yeah. all the vitamins we need. Yeah. Maybe we're not eating as healthy as mm -hmm. we should be. <laughs> um, or And I guess, how would people, how would they recognize if they are vitamin deficient? Like, what, what, would, what, would, what would they be feeling? Yeah. And then how would they be feeling if they weren't vitamin deficient? Right. So, I mean, it, it's, it's a big question just because, I mean, each vitamin kind of has different deficiencies with it. So, like, a B12 deficiency is a common one that you've probably heard of. Low energy tends to be a big one. Um, vegetarian diets, they don't necessarily get enough either. So that would be one there, like based on energy. If it's, if their immune system's very low, like there's someone that gets sick very often. Um, they're always catching colds. Yeah, always or catching they always colds. have a yeah, sinus. Then might be a vitamin C deficiency. Could mm -hmm. be a vitamin D deficiency. Could be kind of any So you guys there. can run the blood work, correct? Or how um, it, or the doctor, you get your doctor to run the blood work, yeah, but you guys get to see it. Yeah, for sure. It's a little okay. harder with vitamins. You can't really specifically test no, all those of tests them. Are yeah. Hard. yeah that's so what they'll I test B12 and they'll test vitamin D and like magnesium and things like that but it's kind of hard they don't often check vitamin C really and no it's they don't specifically <laughs> it's, the test required. is actually a little tricky yeah okay. it is it's not an easy test and and its accuracy is not quite known. yeah to be For but sure. I mean if it's low it's low yeah like, there's definitely no. and yeah based on signs and symptoms sometimes like mm -hmm. iron deficiency is another very common one yeah. among a lot of people yeah. um, and we can get iron tested and take a look at it and see where the levels are at and then supplement with it um, but again yeah there's lots of different signs and symptoms like a zinc deficiency can sometimes show up with right. like brittle nails or so there's little things like that that are it's kind of yeah like I said, it's a big question to fully answer but it yeah so well, we want to make sure um, before we're done with you is that we get all your contact information yes. for all our viewers we sure. want to be able to make sure that we know where to find Dr. Colleen yes. Leonard yes. so 
So I am at the Miramichi Naturopathic Health Clinic. It's in Douglastown, like they said, kind of across from Denham Warehouse. You'll see the big new building. Kind see of, how uh, we give directions? Yeah. yeah. A kind, right? of, I was gonna say, kind of kind of across <laughs> from your hair yes. studio, is it yeah, not? Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, right across yeah. the street from me. Um, yeah, but you can call the clinic. It's 773-3700 right. um, if you'd like, and you can book an appointment. Um, the receptionist will take care of you. They're great over there. Um, but yeah, that's... We're so you would do a consultation? Yes. So That's yeah, how it goes. Usually a first intake is about an hour, depending, give mm -hmm. or take a few minutes. Um, and we go through, like I said, full health history, maybe some physical exams if they're indicated. Right. Um, and then typically we'll have some sort of treatment plan for mm -hmm. after the appointment. If mm -hmm. it's a more complicated case or I want to do a little bit of research on my own, then I'll say let's do a follow-up in a week or two and we can kind of discuss or we do a phone consult or anything like that. Oh, phone consult. Um, yeah, right. that's option two. Um, but yeah, so there's it, follow-ups are just kind of based on the case. So if we're going to do acupuncture, typically acupuncture will do for like once a week for four to six weeks kind of. Great. Um, if it's Perfect. yeah, if it's for energetic or even if it's for physical, if it's back pain or shoulder pain or anything like that, then we'll Yes, because pain is another thing that you yeah, treat as well. For we'll sure. have to bring you I back know. to yeah, more. To for sure. We could have yeah. had a whole show with just her. <laughs> yeah. We want to thank you so much yeah. for joining thank us you. here thank today. And definitely to all our viewers, give her a call Monday to Friday. Monday to Saturday, actually. Oh, Monday yeah. to Saturday. I'm usually off on Perfect. Thursdays and then I'm That's the rest great. of the days. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with more Have a Chat after the break. Don't go away. And we're back with Have a Chat. Joining us now, we have a family tradition. Fletcher's Farm is joining us. We have Natalie and John Fletcher. Hello. Hi. Hi Thanks guys. for joining us today and being one of our guests. We are actually quite excited. I am because I know nothing. You know them a little more than I do and bit. what's all going on. But we are excited to find out about your little family business. But first, tell us who you are. Well, I'm Natalie Fletcher, born and raised here in Miramichi, in sunny corner, just on the outskirts. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm John Fletcher, born and raised also here in Miramichi, uh, Little Barty Bog, the other end of uh, the outskirts. So, yeah. Right on. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about, now you're wearing your shirts, the, fa the, the Fletcher's Farm, a family tradition. So tell us a little bit about this business that you've started. So we uh, started, a, it's primarily a corn maze attraction, so it'll be a fall uh, attraction this year. And, uh, and it's we'll exactly what I think it is when you say corn maze, like out of all those horror movies I've watched <laughs> yeah. during Halloween time and stuff, That's like it. that kind of corn maze? Okay. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a five acre uh, field of corn that we cut a, a maze into, so, uh, and there's an in the maze scavenger hunt people will go through, find the checkpoints and uh, it'll be for the, for the big maze we built an hour for the kids maze we built 20 minutes oh you did have two yep two yeah, there's two within yes. the maze yeah wow now guys where did you get the idea for this because this is this is a this is something yeah. so iconic you know we you, you, they're like a must-do destination and <coughs> to have you guys bringing it here I'm, this is so exciting but tell us how did you have where did you get the idea how did it come together this would be one of John's um, many ideas come to life basically yeah I um, I saw it I must saw it online about 10 years ago and I was just fascinated like I grew up in the country and we always had cornfields and I and remember I raiding cornfields <laughs> <laughs> and um, and yeah and I saw one and I was just like oh that'd be so cool to have a Miramichi but like many Miramichiers we uh, went to school away then we moved away up north moved out west because you and you both were not here or was it just you yeah, that both was away were, both you were both yep. gone yep. Yep. Yeah, so now you're just, back Two years ago, we moved home and uh, bought a house that backed up on family land in Nelson on 40 acres of land. And uh, I said, okay, let's get this corn maze going. It's always been in the back of my head and, and really? everything lined up. And uh, so here we're at, you know, two, three weeks out from grand opening. So 
you know, exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So how how what's the plan as far as running it? Like how do I just show up, or is there certain hours of operation, or is there a Facebook page? Like get it out there. How are we all yeah. gonna? Uh, so we do have a Facebook page. That's mm -hmm. uh, a big. We have a website as well, Fletcher's Farm Five dot com. Okay. Um, but a lot of our information, and videos right now, is being pushed through Facebook, where everybody's on yes. social media. Mm -hmm. um, so just Fletcher's Farm on Facebook, mm -hmm. and we'll be Monday to Friday is going to be reserved for group bookings. Okay. So for uh, corporate bookings or school trips uh, and so on, and then weekends will be open to the public ten to five. Just stop in at the gate. Get your game sheet and go get lost in the maze. Oh, okay. and it's such an iconic, I think, fall tradition, Perfect. right? And it I mean, is. I'm not, not going to let go of summer just yet, Audrey. No, but don't. <laughs> fall's only a couple weeks away here, and I, you know, I whether when I was living away or even in Miramichi, mm -hmm. it's, it's just something about marking one of those fall weekends to head out to a farm, whether it's apple picking or That's right. corn mazes mm -hmm. or picking up your pumpkins. And I know you guys are going to have. A bit more than the maze. You've got a, a little bit. Uh, you've got a few other components happening on the farm. So tell us, what's going to be there? What's the whole Fletcher Farm experience? So there's going to be, like John said, the five-acre maze, which is going to be geared towards, like, uh, I guess people who want a good challenge. It's going to be about an hour, an hour and fifteen minutes to get through the maze. I'm like five acres. <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, can I skip the this. gym yeah. one day and count that yeah. as a workout? Yeah. That's sounding like. Yeah, you can run it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then there's going to be just for the younger kids or someone who just wants a quick experience. The mirror machine is going to be the the kids maze. So that'll be about 15, 15 20, 20 minutes, minutes yeah. to, to experience that and mm -hmm. complete the games in, inside that. But also we're building right now um, like a, a fun park. We're going to have like a hay bale pyramid with a slide coming down and just oh, a couple wow. of little tire. Um, caterpillar tire. Yeah, the caterpillar tire. Just things for the <coughs> oh, kids yes. to jump on and a corn box instead of a sandbox. It's going to be filled with corn kernels. Just little things to, to keep you busy with the family. So a family can come and really spend a whole afternoon oh, easy. on the yes. farm. And yep, exactly. And the wagon ride. Can't forget about the wagon we ride. We just finished oh. that this morning. Our yeah. trail oh, goes, part, part of it goes right through the cornfield. Yeah. So the fee so. that you would pay to do the maze, does, are these all just separate things or can you have a family pass to partake in everything or so how is that going to work? To get on the site for your mazes, um, it's you pay your adult or child fee, eight mm -hmm. and ten bucks, mm -hmm. and uh, then the wagon ride would be the only extra thing on top of that. Okay. But you can play in the fun park, you can, right. um, and the wagon rides are a dollar a person or five bucks oh, a family. Oh, my land. So it's pretty, pretty Too economical easy. and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were out this morning, we had the kids in the wagon, and it was pretty exciting going through oh the corn. Way. They oh. just loved it. Does the wagon ride go through the corn maze? No. No, no it's a corn no. field. Oh, it's through a corn just field. Just a portion though. on the back side. Oh, it's gonna, okay. You're going to actually go through the corn. So, yeah. Tell me what it took to plant and do and grow and cut the, to do the corn maze itself. Like, how many did you have to plant? Uh, so usually you plant 30,000 uh, seeds per acre, but when you do a corn maze, you double plant. So we, we had 300,000 seeds. Um, so, it's, so it makes it extra thick and yes, so you dense, can't see so through the trails. you can't see through yeah. the walls. Okay. Um, yeah, going back to basically last fall, I had to, it was an old uh, hay field. So we had to plow it under, we had to harrow it. Uh, so okay. I spent most of last fall and early this spring getting that prepped. Uh, then I hired a local guy, Ryan Taylor, to plant our field. Okay. Um, he plants corn. By and now. when would we? When would you have planted? It was, was first that? couple weeks of June. Okay. Yeah. So plant it, and then um, I have consultants in the states who who helping us set it up the corn maze. So he sent his cutter from, actually the guy that owns one in Salisbury. He come. He came up and he spent about four hours and cut our design. And if you haven't seen the design, the design is the Miramichi like, logo. Oh, is it with really? With Discover Miramichi cut into the maze. That's the actual. How would I even see that unless I had a little? Facebook. Like, Facebook. You guys have it on Facebook now. Oh, does somebody? Yeah, someone yeah. took an aerial shot. I have a drone. Shot? Yeah. Oh, you yeah, do. Yeah. I was yeah. like, unless I own a drone, I'll never see it. I am five feet tall. <laughs> I'm going to see nothing from yes. <laughs> that corn maze when I'm running around it. No. I'm telling you right now. So, is is uh, was it a good growing season? Obviously, it yes. must have been somewhat. Surprisingly, we were getting a little. I was concerned. like a little dry. Yes. And then okay. we, It was probably about eye level, maybe you know, almost six feet, and then we okay. had that dump of rain, and it shot up two or three feet. So oh it's, it's wow! Really so now we're oh, right that's where good. We need to be. Exactly. Oh yeah, it's it's. We measured one yesterday. It was just under eleven feet. Yeah. So, but, but on average, it's about nine feet. Yeah. Now, will you cultivate the corn afterwards? No, I don't no, think what so. Is, it's cow corn, so it's. Oh. Okay. Oh, it's it. not edible. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. No. 
That, that was, so I was like, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> a big corn boil at the end of the after, season? For the but cows? I know because, <laughs> for the cows. Uh, you do have, you know, your fa a family, a long family legacy or mm -hmm. tradition in farming. And John, I, I kind of know your mom well yes, from yeah. the farmers, the local farmers markets, mm -hmm. and she's always there. Um, do you do you also grow produce for sale? Like it, it, when when I'm at the farm, might I be able to pick up some fresh vegetables, or that's sort of a different? Uh, um, so my father does grow and sell vegetables at the local farmers market. So he'll okay. if he has any leftover, he sells them on Friday. Um, yeah, he'll probably have some extras, and we do have a garden that will probably. Uh, we're getting our kids into right. growing a little bit and selling yeah. a bit, so we should have a little bit of produce there as well. So it might it won't be corn, but no. I'm not, but I'm going to be um, able to pick something, something up fresh and pick up a little something, yeah. something yeah. fresh. Yeah. I can see yeah. the schools doing school trips. That'd be great, yeah. right? It would be yes. really fun. For that the would be yeah. really something different mm. that they haven't experienced, where we all know what it is and have heard of it before, and we're running around. Well, like, you, know you know, know, yeah, and you know, that one of the be. other things that I that I think is so great about this, and and I commend you guys, and I'm also just thinking about how the last guest was. A young person who know, went away and I came know. home, and you guys did the same thing, and I did the same thing, and it's just such a wonderful thing to have you back in the community and doing this. But this is one of the things we are always talking about in tourism is, of course, stretching that tourism season. Everybody knows yeah. when we talked about it in the opening, Audrey, summer is such an amazing time. But to but stretch only... that tourism season mm -hmm. into the shoulders, yeah. as we call it technically, and into the fall, this is not just something spectacular for the local kids, but yeah. people will come from all across the province, hopefully, yes. to experience this corn maze. It must be one of only, you mentioned Salisbury, but there's only a couple in the province, and there's, now... We'll be one of four. One of four. But we'll be the only one north of Salisbury or Moncton. So this will bring people into the community to mm -hmm. do the corn maze, mm -hmm. and then maybe they'll stay for supper, they're mm -hmm. gonna shop That's around. That's right, so yeah, it's exactly. Really they're gonna use other amenities that we have within the city to you know, spread that so, tourism dollar. That's right, and just right. a note to, to uh, people watching as well, uh, yeah. the zip line stays open in, in the weekends uh, to that's right, until after the Thanksgiving. So people wanna come in and wanna they can do the corn maze and the, and the zip line. Uh, no, I actually, I have a client of mine, she, for her 70th birthday, she zip lined. And I'm like, okay, so now I, I have that. to, now I have to go do that. I'm just like, I can't believe it. She sent me a picture from when she was out there. I'm like, ah, she did it. Now I have to go do that. That's amazing. I'm terrified, but I, I still would rather go on stage in heels, I think, than to do the zip line. I really do. But um, now is there any plans? I know this is just opening up for you guys, but I, I can just see the wheels turning of him thinking ahead just from <laughs> yeah. what you said before about adding this, on to guy. this. Yeah. I'm a married, I've been married a long time too, I know. Um, <laughs> pumpkin patch maybe or things that would go with all of that fall stuff pumpkin patch for sure next year we, okay. we plan to we were thinking of it this year and we thought no that's just a little bit too much all the at first once year. yeah um, pumpkin patch uh, we hope to have an actual a barn with livestock and a petting zoo within a couple oh, years wow. it's similar to the napping fair which yes. is finished up yes um and, uh, and some extra kind of farm entertainment mm -hmm. uh, pedal carts and, and some other things that kids can do and really uh, Show the history of farming a little bit. That's, we're right? so disconnected from from we that are. agricultural background. We are. The kids don't know yeah. where things came from <coughs> or how it all came about in the first place. And they, it seems that they are getting back into it. I, I you know, maybe yeah. you, you guys would know uh, better than I. But I, what I hear is that in some of the schools, they're they're planting gardens mm -hmm. and teaching. Yeah. I know Nelson and yeah. Comfortable. They're not just planting flowers. They're growing they're food. Growing food. Yeah. And, right, and how to do those things. And there seems to be a trend more and more back towards eating local and mm -hmm. eating fresh. And so if, if as consumers we want to eat that way, well, somebody's got to grow it too, right? Yeah, that's so. just it. Well, the same as when we had Dr. Leonard just on talking about eating mm -hmm. better and eating healthier. Well, that those two Absolutely. things go hand in hand. It has to come from, you know, growing it naturally in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, John right? and Natalie, I, uh, this summer, actually had a garden, a little... Oh, did you? I don't have a you yard, but I have a big deck, and I have a raised garden bed. It's okay. probably the size, a little smaller than your so table what did here, you Audrey. Plant? And um, <laughs> we, had some, we had some hits and some misses. Oh, okay. Um, what survived? Had, well, you know, the beans. The, the, uh, we planted green and yellow beans. Only the yellow are coming in. They're coming in so amazing. They're and, taking and heavy over. heavy right now. It's so great. Our zucchinis were phenomenal. Um, the kale was a hit. The spinach and the lettuce, not as much, yeah. but I think that they 
we might have overplanted and overcrowded because okay. we just wanted everything in there and we really should have spaced more out. But so if you need any any help on the farm, <laughs> yes, because uh, he's looking you know. to get some extra info yeah, yeah. or right. seeds. I need a weekend gig. Yeah. I'm gonna come. I'll yeah. come by and he's yeah. looking to get a greener thumb. Yes, and I want. I you know, and I find that it is. Uh, it's a bit uh, not addictive, but I really enjoy it. It's oh, yes. it sort of adaptive. almost to Dr. It's Leonard's point. It's almost therapeutic. It's my meditation mm. when it I go out every yeah. day. It's very mindful, right? You're, and, you're mindfully uh, involved in what you're doing. Watering yeah. my plants in the morning and in the evening, and it's just a time. And when you to see be... that growth mm -hmm. and that nurturing, yes, you know what I mean, and you see it coming alive. I just I'll, I'm going to make one note to a little video I watched when I was on the treadmill this morning, of it was somewhat like mindfulness and about. Uh, looking after the garden and watering it every day and tending to it, there is a bamboo tree, a Japanese, Chinese bamboo tree that literally takes five years to grow. Five years in the sense that it literally stays beneath the ground for five years before it sprouts. Wow. And then in a matter of weeks, it grows to 90 feet tall. Oh, wow. And just talking about, do you not water it one day just because you don't see the growth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. to, to keep nurturing it and looking after it despite all of that. So I'm just like, oh, the show, everything's all coming together. Everything's well, we had to, I, my tomato plant. We have a little cherry tomatoes. And all summer long, uh, we've been convinced that it was just like, it was, it was dead. It, it was a goner. Happening. And in the last <laughs> few days, there's so many tomatoes coming in and, and r turning red and ripening. And yeah. Trust the process. You just have yeah. to. Right. Well, that was just like Give our carrots. Our carrots struggled. We planted them twice. They didn't come. Last night we were out weeding. And There's the, the carrots. Yeah. yeah. We don't oh, know yeah. if they just. Yeah. But but that big heat stretch too slowed everything it down. It slows and things down. And then that down. rain just brought everything back to life, right? Now, so. what about? Uh, I'll touch a little bit before we end up running out of time. Now, pesticides and bugs. Or how are you dealing with that? Because there's a lot of rules and regulations and how you can look mm -hmm. after and treat because you no longer can use chemicals or. Things like that. Um, so, like I said, we hired uh, a local guy that plants corn. He takes okay. care of all that for oh, us. Oh, and he'll look after it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So that, uh, um, I, I did want to make, make a note too, and I know, Audrey, we're always running out of time. Yeah. No, you go so ahead. Quickly. Um, yeah, that you guys, you have you have a big grand opening day planned. Oh, too. yes, yes. And Don't that's tell us. on tell uh, Saturday, September 1st, that's right? It. So tell us all about grand opening. What can we expect? September 1st. Um, so it's grand opening weekend, so September 1st and 2nd. We're going to have... Okay. Um, we're gonna have a ribbon cutting ceremony that morning, and it's actually, I'm pretty excited. Uh, my grandmother, who's 95, who's still the land owner in Nelson okay. of where the maze, she's gonna cut the, the ribbon, and um, wow. so it's gonna be pretty cool having her. Awesome. And we have some dignitaries, I think Mayor Lorden or someone on your behalf, and, and some yeah. other people are gonna show up. Um, then it's just kind of a chance for everybody to come see the, the maze. Uh, we is there a time? Like it's September 1st, is it all 10 day? 10 to 5. 10 yep. to 5. And a phone number if somebody wants to call? Uh, yep. 627 1929 is there. 1929. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's for if someone wants to actually book a crow booking and yep. stuff Bookings, like that. Yep. But Questions. And you did say you have a website, but you have a Facebook page where a lot is happening. Will yep. you be posting? Is that where pictures are right that's, now that yeah, I can I, see? I, yeah, I'm I'll pretty have to active get on, on there. there. Yeah. I put videos oh, up are you? Do yeah. oh. I have a drone, so I shoot it up and get. Well, they're yeah. definitely, you guys are, are doing a great job of promoting and marketing. I know there's a big yeah. a buzz in the community. Mm -hmm. Everybody is really excited. And exactly. Well, f thank you so much for joining us today, Thanks John. Thanks for having us on. Natalie, thank yes, you. we're very interested. We will definitely have you guys back on. Um, maybe we should go. We should go. We should go thank and like try it out. Me, Judy, Natalie. yes, let's bring Judy. So welcome. Yes. Judy and Veronique, <laughs> and we'll go through and see. Well, it's a contest. It's a race. Well, I think Judy, Judy still owes me a trip to the zip line. Oh, does she? So oh. I think we'll have to take Judy and do both. Okay, yes, okay. <laughs> I'll take the pictures if you're doing the zip line thing. <laughs> we want to say thank you to all our viewers for joining us today, and we'll see you again next week. Enjoy. Cheers, thanks. This is great, guys. Really, yeah, we're excited.